Hey guys, I'm Jitin Vaswani from Domenax and I'm owner of Bloggers Idea. So I'm with my two very good friends, Ashwin Vivekona, who's a domain guy from India. He's a domain investor, buyer, seller, and he's a great, he's my, he's my great friend. And the Zach Masovich, the guy who brought me a laptop from Canada and everyone wants to know the reason. What is the reason that why Zach? It is the power of building a relationship. So I made a good relationship with Zach in just five minutes and now we are having a video interview with Zach and he will be sharing his experience on domaining and parking domain. So we have some funny questions and some critical questions for Zach. So Zach, please share something about yourself, man. Okay, so uh, I'm from uh, Toronto, Canada and I'm a lawyer. I've uh, been practicing law for 17 years. I specialize in domain names and intellectual property and trademarks. And I've been coming to India for three summers in a row now. This is my second domain name, uh, Domain X Conference. And this is uh, the second time we've met. And you made a special request for me to bring you a special something uh, in my baggage, yeah. uh, which I did. Yes. yes. You, it's, it, <laughs> Everyone is going crazy on Facebook right now. It is the most beautiful computer I've ever seen. Yeah, it's, you, it's Microsoft Facebook. Yeah, and can you get those kind of computers here, this model? In India, I was not getting here. It, it was very, very expensive from Amazon.com. So I, I thought that you are the best person. I made a good relationship with you. So I just ping you on Facebook, man. You know, as I mentioned to you the other day, if somebody asks me to bring them an expensive computer like that across the world to India, I tell them no. <laughs> but so I'm for the first you, person. I'm the first you. person. Yeah. I, I, how could I say no to Jitendra? Oh, how could I say no? <laughs> thank you. Thank you so it's much. Impossible. You can't say no to this face, right? Oh, you can't say no to this face. <laughs> Branding power. Okay. Yes. So, Zach, so Ashwin, you have some question for Zach uh, related to parking and domains and some more details. So, Ashwin, over to you, man. So, yeah. So can you be in this front? Yeah. 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 Hope I get a laptop next year. <laughs> <laughs> you got a good face too, Ashwin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Keep it but not like Jitendra. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. So yeah. uh, coming to some things. Uh, I want. Uh, can you can we start with UDRP? What exactly is yeah. UDRP? Okay. So UDRP is um, it stands for Uniform Domain Name Dispute Resolution Policy. But it's just a fancy term uh, to describe a certain legal procedure that people do on domain name owners, okay? So if you register a domain name, uh, it costs you 10 bucks or a thousand bucks, whatever it costs, you register it, and then some company has a problem with you registering that because they have a trademark, for trademark example, yes. then they can pay a fee to a private court. It's called an arbitration, but it's essentially a court with a judge, but it's not run by the government. And you have to participate in it. You have no choice. So they pay a fee of between $1,300 and $2,000 to the, to the private court, to the arbitrators. And then they plus, that plus they also pay a lawyer. So it's an expensive wow. procedure. Maybe it will cost them four or 5,000 United States dollars to start the problem with you. And then you, they file all this paperwork saying that uh, we have a trademark, uh, you have no trademark, you copied our, our trademark in the domain name, you have no right to do that. And they make all their complaints against you and they file that and they send you a copy and then you have to respond to it. And if you don't respond satisfactorily, the name gets taken out of your account. Oh. Okay? So this is, they basically accuse you of cyber squatting. And if you are not a cyber squatter, you defend yourself. If you're a cyber squatter, then maybe you just let it sit. Oh. <laughs> I should, so, yeah. so now that we just got to know about the cyber squatting, yeah. uh, I would also want you to explain a little bit about cyber squatting so that okay. it gets more clear. Sure. So cyber squatting is a term that, refers to when somebody registers a domain name specifically to interfere with or screw another company, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and um, uh, so, for example, the famous brand Coca-Cola. If I registered Coca-Cola.com or a typo of Coca-Cola, they would consider me a cyber squatter. 
right? Mm -hmm. So that's like a very obvious example of cyber squatting. When you register a domain name in bad faith for no good reason. For, for the sake of money, I think? Yes, to either sell it to them okay. or to divert their traffic or to make up a web page that looks like theirs but isn't theirs, something to interfere with them, or to sell to one of their competitors. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah that's right. Perfect. Thank you. So other thing I uh, wanted to get into domain name leasing. This is a new yeah. concept like uh, for a domain investor like me who have thousands of domains, yes. and it just gets hard to, to make revenue from it if, if it's not in, in sparked. Yeah. So wanted to get into uh, get some insights from you regarding this uh, domain name leasing as a concept okay. and uh, how you know uh, how proven this concept is and if it's really people are really using this kind of services okay so, yeah so this is um, uh, selling a domain name isn't your only option of making money from it leasing is as well but the way it usually happens is, let's say you have one of your very valuable domain names that's like a six-figure U.S. dollar domain name, and I know you have a few. <laughs> of those. That's the secret. That's the secret. <laughs> <laughs> the secret is being revealed in this interview. <laughs> <laughs> right? And so somebody comes and makes an offer uh, that they say, listen, I want to start a business using that domain name. I really love the domain name. Will you accept 10000 you say, no, no, how can I accept 10000 This is at least $100,000. Uh, but then you say, but listen, tell me more about the business that you plan on doing. And they tell you a little bit about it. And you say, you know what, I like you, I like the business, but still I can't sell it for 10000 Forget about it, no matter how much I like you and your business. But how about this? How about you give me 10000 now, next month you give me another 2500 and next month another 2500 all the way until... Uh, for three years and that gives you some time to build the business to build some profitability and at that point Then you'll have an option of buying it for me after two years or after three years and the price is in down the road is going to be more expensive than I would sell it to you now if you can pay me cash now to buy it a hundred thousand but in, oh. in two years 150 200,000 so, so the price keeps on increasing can keep on increasing but the good news is for the guy who will get to use a premium generic domain name that he can't afford for very little money down, right? Okay. And the, the owner of the domain name has the benefit of he gets some cash flow, right? And he might sell the domain name to this guy for more than he would even get today down the road. And if, he, if the domain has been sitting on the shelf for some time, maybe it's the best opportunity. To wow. uh, that's that's really a great idea to ensure safety mm -hmm. for a seller for a, like if I have that domain so yes. and if uh, how do I ensure safety about it like yes. like uh, there are a lot of bloggers and just like me <laughs> <laughs> who might just uh, like at times you know if someone sp uh, spams this domain name it's a, it's very risky that way so yes. how do you ensure uh, some things like that like I, I just turned the name servers to uh, to the other p leasing party and he spams this domain for another two years and give that domain back to me. Yeah. How, do you, how do I ensure that this does not happen? Sure. Okay, so this is a great question and this is a big issue. So first of all, as you mentioned, when you own the domain name and someone's leasing it from you, you never give them ownership of it or control. The name stays in your account. All you do is point the name service to them. So you have complete control of the ownership of the domain name throughout the whole term and that doesn't change. Sometimes you can negotiate to put the domain name into escrow with escrow.com or with a lawyer and that way the buyer or the renter has some security too because they're paying every month. They want to know if they're investing in developing the site, the name's going to be there for them. So sometimes that's important from their perspective. But then the other issue, as you mentioned, is the security because they can cause damage to the domain name. They could get it blacklisted in Google, they could break spam laws with it, they could post a website that defames somebody or copyright infringes, and then the party who has, is complaining looks at the who is and they say, oh, it's you. And you say, no, it's not me, I'm just renting it to these guys. Well, so you rented it to people, that are doing this to me, so you're responsible. Responsible for this. Right? Yes. Yeah. So the way to look at it is that 
Every day in this country and all over the world, people rent very expensive real estate to other people. They rent apartments and condominiums. Yes. So you, landlords will rent a place for you know ten thousand you know for for ten thousand dollars a month for very expensive real estate that's worth millions of dollars, and they will do it. Uh, because they have an agreement that says what you can and can't do with the rental unit, but but paper is only as good as it's you know as if the guy has no money, right? Then what's the use of the paper? The damage is already done, right? Mm -hmm. So you need to get a down payment from him, right? Yeah. You need to get first and last month, so you have some money from him. And the other thing you need to do is, as a good landlord is you need to check up on your property. A good landlord who rents an apartment goes by, looks in, sees what's going on, makes sure there's nothing illegal going on, makes sure it's being maintained. So same thing with a domain name. You need to keep an eye on your property when you're renting it. You can't just give it to the guy to use and have the money come in and don't look. You need to keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on it. Any more so questions you have? Yeah, yeah. so many of them. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll add one other thing to that. Okay. The best thing that a landlord can do when he's renting a domain name or an apartment is to check out the tenant. Is he, does he have good references? Is he a good character? Is he reliable? Does he have a job? Those are the same things you do with someone who's renting a domain name to make sure that when you're renting it to someone who's not going to give you a problem. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Will you be able to make the agreements for this if, if asked for, like, for some... Uh, yeah. So, like, sometimes um, someone will ask me to do an agreement who, like, I've got one client, for example, that every week or two he asks me to do a simple lease agreement. Not big money, maybe $300 a, a month, $500 a month, you know? Mm -hmm. And he uses the same kind of agreement. So I just change it a little bit mm -hmm. here and there, and I do the agreement for him, and it's very cheap for me to do it. Right. Other times... This is like a million dollar name and there's a lawyer on the other side and there's negotiations about escrow and terms and that. And I do that too, of course, but then it becomes more expensive. Right. Yeah. Uh, other than this, uh, the other option uh, an investor has apart from uh, leasing the domain is parking it, yes. right? Yeah. So I have a question related to parking. Yeah. Uh, as you all know, like uh, uh, with three-letter domains, especially that I have so many of them, I'm really concerned. Uh, there was a recent case where where a domain like ehf.com was uh, was uh, lost. The, the was filed up a UDRP case and it was lost by the owner of that domain, mostly because the domain was parked. <coughs> and uh, so, so like considering this thing, do you think it's uh, like advisable to park? your domain names now that you know in that case he lost the domain okay so i mean the whole thing about parking is it's nice to have money coming in for from doing nothing right that's great <laughs> you know everyone wants yeah. free money yeah you can't do anything better than that i mean that is like you wake up in the morning and you count how much money you made while you were sleeping right yes. so it's a great thing it's a great thing uh, and it used to be even more money back, you know, several years ago. People were making even more money than now from parking. But in any event, I understand the attraction to parking. But you need to do a, a, a risk analysis with your name. Uh, you need, if, if you look at your three-letter domain name and you see there's plenty of trademark owners out there who would all love this domain name, and you park it, and then ads come up for their brand, for their services, for their, in their vertical, they're going to have a problem with you, right? And so if, if the, it's probably not worth the risk of parking it um, if you can't control the content. If you could configure the types of ads that come up and there's no way for the trademark owner to manipulate it so you don't have to check in on it every day, then that's great. That's the free money situation. But if you feel that the parking services can't guarantee you that there's going to be clean ads out there, then it's not worth the risk because those three letter domain names are so valuable and there's a long line of companies that would love to have it for themselves. Okay, okay. Makes absolute sense. So uh, I have some funny question here right now. Yes. So did you like the Indian food here right now in Delhi and how's the weather? Okay, so in terms of Indian food, I have a major, major problem with Indian food, okay? Why? 
I can't stop eating it, okay? We <laughs> love Indian food so much, yeah. yeah. I can't stop eating it. Breakfast is unbelievable, okay? So, and lunch is unbelievable, dinner is un unbelievable. So I can't stop eating the food, and I even started making it at home, okay? So okay. I started making chana masala at home. I even made pani puri at home, okay? I made, tried to make dal. My dal was a disaster. I burnt my dal, okay? I can't make dal. So I, I love Indian food. I remember uh, Facebook posts yeah. of that yeah. <laughs> Indian food. Something. I went veg for eight months. <laughs> <laughs> wow. wow. Yeah. I, I, I had to stop being veg because I loved the veg food so much. I was gaining too much weight. I couldn't fit into my clothes. Mm -hmm. So I had to go off veg, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Your son was there, isn't he? The pig with, with your son. He, he also loves Indian food? My son, I'm trying to teach him about Indian food, but I, I, I'm the big Indian food lover <laughs> in my family. Okay, one last question, Zach. You want is to in my the weather? Your weather. weather. Yeah, weather. Weather. <laughs> Listen, the weather is very uh, mild, I think. Okay. It's better than Hong Kong. Better than Hong Kong. Hong yeah. Kong, can I say I sweat my ass off in Hong Kong? <laughs> <laughs> I sweat my ass off in Hong Kong. It was so humid. People were stopping me in the street asking me if I was okay. All right? Oh, my but, God. So I, the weather here has been very good. It's been, it's been good. Yeah. So your experience, one last question, your experience at Domain X right now. Yeah. You know, I look forward to going to Domain X every year. Um, wow. And, and wow. I, uh, I, this is my second time here. And I was very impressed with the speakers today. The speakers were fabulous. It was a wow. good uh, assortment of them. And I was really impressed the way most of the attendees stayed for the entire thing. And it wasn't a short day. It was a long day. Long day. Yeah. information. And they didn't budge from their seat. They stayed and watched the whole thing. I think there was a lot of learning going on. And, and more importantly than the actual learning about issues and skills is they got to see the examples of great accomplished domainers such as Ashwin, right? The yeah, Ashwin, yes. yes. You know, the examples of people who had succeeded, and that to me is the, the best learning experience from Domain X, getting to see the success stories. Wow, great. So thank you, Ashwin. Thanks so much, and thanks, Zach, for a wonderful uh, chat or interview, so we, so we can say. And thank you so much, and I hope readers enjoy. And you have, you have shared so much in depth knowledge about UDRPs and domaining. It's it's great. Thank you, Jack. Thank it was you. An honor to be interviewed by you, Jatendra. Thank, thank you so much. The master. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.